I grew up in Westchester County, went to school there. When I was 18, I um, ended up coming out to California to go to St. Mary's College. I went to work for the phone company in 1965 and became an officer around 1984 of what was then Pacific Telesis. So in December of 1989, Pacific Telesis with a company called Manusmann in Germany won the license to be the first competitor to Deutsche Telekom. The European Union at the time had decided that it was that all the countries in the Union were going to use a new standard that had been developed about three years earlier called GSM. I got sent over to Germany and we built the, the world's first um, digital <coughs> cellular system, or mobile system as I prefer to call it. They really hadn't worked through any of the issues. So in some ways it was pretty damn scary because we were going to put a billion dollars into this business before we really knew that everything was going to work. We had um, delays of about a year until uh, one day the Minister of Communications in Germany, Schwarz Schilling, uh, gave us permission to launch a network with or without the European Union's blessing. We got that network up and made the uh, first international calls in early June of 1992. AirTouch spun off of Pacific Telesis around 1993 and was the biggest wireless operator in the world at the time. I became um, the head of international operations and built networks in 10 countries around the world, including the first CDMA network in the world in Korea. OmniPoint was um, something that could only have happened in the late 90s. We built a network that was about 40 feet off the ground and we used flat panel antennas so people didn't know where the hell we were. And it allowed us to have huge capacity and, and avoid the interference that happened with the high networks. We got involved in, in the auctions in 1996, bought licenses for about 100 million pops, and raised and spent $4 billion without ever turning a profit. This is OmniPoint. Ah! This is Omni point. was our advertising bird at OmniPoint, even though parrots are a pain in the backside. He did enough work for us so that he got his own room when we built this house. Well, Claire and I have been married for almost 48 years. We had uh, three children and we have six grandkids now. Claire and I raced our first horse a little over 10 years ago and we got the bug. Me much more than Claire. You feel like you're 16 years old again. Yeah, I mean, you, you got butterflies, you're nervous. I like um, breeding my own horses. And we'll know how good we are at it in another year. By another year from now, we'll know. I do play a little golf. And I love just being up here at Lake Tahoe. I had always been looking for technologies that would replace GSM and CDMA. I listened to the XG story at the time. I decided I'd, I'd go back to work again and that we would invest in this company. And it's been over three years and we finally have a working cognitive radio system. I think the first thing that was really surprising was when short message service texting became so dominant so quickly in Europe. And I guess now my biggest surprise is, and it's especially true in New York City, people come down out of the tall buildings and they're watching a damn TV show on their smartphone and I just sit there and go, how did the world get this way? When, when, when I was growing up, we didn't have TV yet. The wireless industry has already done a lot to change the world. Um, but I think even more will happen over the next um, 10 and 20 years. I know that there are things I'm not even thinking about today that'll happen in the wireless world. And, and it'll be people that are in their 30s and 40s today that'll invent those things and they will make significant changes in the world as well.